I always told myself this, the day I will find a girl who will make time slow down when I see her, <laughs> that's the woman I will marry. This guy had tattoos, this guy has pierced his ears, hey, hey. So, and these are the things my mom was like, okay, ni lete a jana. You have brought out the best version of me. You have challenged me to be a better person. You have assured me of how strong of a person I am. With this ring, I be wed, and with all my worldly goods, I be endow. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. So my name is Shabet McKenna Kegode, or Mrs. Kegode. Um, and I am a digital content creator. I'm also uh, an entrepreneur, so I do social media uh, marketing for clients. Um, I like traveling a lot. I like going out to discover new places. I like reading. I like swimming. I like washing my house. Eating good food. Eating good food. <laughs> yeah, that's me on a good day. Yeah. Uh, my name is Ethan Hard Kegode. Um, I'm a photographer. I like to consider myself more as a creative uh, because I do a lot of creative stuff. I'm into film, I'm into photography, I'm into music, uh, producing music and all that stuff. Um, on a, my year so far has been exciting, challenging, like in the year so far and I'm grateful for it. Yeah. Well, we met how we ended up meeting eventually was online. But um, how we actually grew a relationship is that I was planning a birthday photo shoot and he's a photographer and that's how we kind of kicked it off. But, uh, I think the backstory, first of all, how what happened on that day is not like what got us together. Uh, that was just something that of course was going to happen. but. How we got together is that we used to be in school. We used to be in the same campus, school, same yeah. campus, yeah. And um, she knew me, but I didn't really know her per se. Okay. Like I, <laughs> I knew her, I, I knew of her, but I didn't know, know her. Yeah. So um, her friend had booked a, a shoot with me like previously mm -hmm. and she had known. So she asked him to say hi to me. Then I was like, who is this? So I went on Instagram, checked her out and, and whatnot, and that's when I was like, oh, okay. So that's where, that's how the online vibe goes on. Uh, the shoot that we did actually was all the way at, uh, at the coast at Mombasa, and we had a good time. Um, so one thing I like um, about Ethan, the photo, the photo shoot that we did in Mombasa, he asked because I wanted a birthday photo shoot and I remember I was turning 24 uh, on the 24th so it was like my golden year and so I wanted something special and, and he, he didn't, he was like okay so what story do you want to tell with your pictures and I was like what do you mean story, I just want pictures and I want to look good. So that's one thing I like about him even after today, like if you book a shoot with Ethan you will he will he will take you to the backstory and try to understand like okay so what are you trying to achieve with these photos so yeah so we i kind of gave him a story i don't know if there was a story ama he was just into me but i so i gave him the story and then yeah we went to coast we got some really nice shots and actually because he was now he had to come back to nairobi i was still on holiday because it was on my, on my birthday so and i actually cried when he was leaving so that's when i knew that this man there is something about him I remember uh, the day I was leaving, she, she was very sad and um, I think what made me know that she liked me was because <laughs> she asked me to tell her when I got to the airport before I also when I got into the plane and immediately when I landed <laughs> and immediately when I got home. Yeah. So she really wanted to know all about how oh. I got home and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah. yeah. Who made the first move? I think... Was there a first move? I don't think so. Because yeah. it was very... Because you see, after Coast, there's a time I had... He says this now, that I ghosted him. But yeah. I don't think I did. For like a week or two. A week? <laughs> How long was That it? was like 
a month. <laughs> it wasn't a full month. It was long. But he said that I ghosted him. Yeah. So, so, but like I didn't think I was ghosting him. I just wasn't talking to him as I was. But I, I was also like into him, but not trying to be like obvious. so obvious about it. So for us, it was more of a like all of us were just contributing to the build up of our relationship. Yeah. No one, no one really said. No one really made a move per se. Because I remember even when, like it was in June of that year, is when mm. we were like, okay, so, like, do we want to take, because we had a conversation where we were like, if we're actually having a, getting into a relationship, we're in it for the long run. Yeah. And both of us were, of course, had previous experiences and we knew that we wanted to get into this for the long run. So, yeah, it was a mutual build Yeah, up. we actually started off as friends uh, yeah. because it was long into the into the friendship that we were like okay maybe this is something yeah that, yeah because it wasn't more like Ooh, i like her let me hit on her no it was more we were really we were actually hanging out we're going out for movies we're going out for for dates and stuff like that so i mean one thing led to the other mm. and it and <laughs> boom it was was I in a state where I was looking for someone? Uh, not really. In fact, I had given up on <laughs> finding someone. Yeah. Um, I remember, and people will be shocked to hear this, but I remember at that time, I had been so heartbroken by so many chicks that I was like, you know what? I don't care. I will just be a player. So I was actually, um, even by the time McKenna and I were friends, I, there was like other three girls that I was talking to. So. I was like, so when she ghosted me, um, I was like, you know, whatever, you know, just go on with life. <laughs> so, um, no, I wasn't in the place of looking for someone yeah. at that moment. And that's why when we finally got to the place where we're like, I think we have something. But if we're going into it, we have to go all the all way. The way. Yeah. yeah. For me, I wasn't looking either. In fact, that year was the year I was like, this is the year for McKenna to show herself some love, to travel alone, to do all the things I love, and I don't want anything to do with men. Living <laughs> so, your best life. Yeah, she living actually my has best a t-shirt written that. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I put it on a t-shirt, living my best life. So um, that was the year for me. Like I was literally not, um, I wasn't looking forward to, to getting to a relationship and a partner, a long time partner for that matter. Uh, but I think it's also just how God works. I feel like when you're just focusing on your different things and then it's like, it's like when you're trying to find it, it won't come. But like when you focus on other things that you need to be doing, mm. then God just brings you someone and boom. Yeah. yeah. For me, what stood out and what struck me about Ethan is this, like the conversations that we were having. And even the first date when he actually reached out on my Instagram and I was like, oh, do you want to hang out? And even by the time we were hanging out the next time, I didn't think, oh, this is someone I would fall in love with. I was like, I had a good time. Like the conversations were so deep, Yanni. Like Ethan can be deep, Baka, you wonder what are you saying yourself? So yeah, for me, it was the conversations that we used to have and we still have right now. And I feel like it shouldn't be something that you experience when you're dating and then that's it. I feel like you should carry it along with your, you know, when you get married and whatever. Mm. So, yeah, for me, it was the conversations mostly. For me, yeah. what stood out was, first of all, McKenna is very pretty. I don't know if you've noticed. <laughs> but I remember the first date we had, um, I always told myself this. Uh, which is ridiculous because it's all, it always happens in movies. Mm -hmm. Only in movies, actually. I told myself the day I will find a girl who will make time slow down when I see her. <laughs> that's the woman I will hit on. That's the woman I will marry. And the first day I saw McKenna, like the first, the first date we had, uh, the first physical meeting we had, I swear that's what I felt. <laughs> I could have sworn that's what I felt. Because first of all, she was bougie. She was looking all bougie and whatnot. She had everything, her phone and... Her earrings were all shining, they all looked... Yanni, she was just like, wah! <laughs> so I was, just, I was just like, hey, okay, this girl is pretty. Um, but that time I actually hadn't said this is it. But it was, I think I liked her, her style and her, the way she carried herself. 
Makena has a very sophisticated way of doing things. Like she just she just people do this and then her she does this other thing. <laughs> so for me that was something intriguing. Yes, I think if anything I was much of the talker that first night. So it's true. Yeah. <laughs> so, he talks like the whole day. Yeah. Was just there laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I was actually trying to impress her and I didn't know. Yeah. So yeah, that's what stood out for me, her, the way she carried, carried herself. So did I see the proposal coming? Yes. Yes and no, because I kind of I kinda yeah. planned my proposal because I was planning a photo shoot for myself, a beauty portrait uh, photo shoot. And so it needed to have my face, so I needed to fix my makeup, my hair, my nails. And, and those are things that for me, it was like, if you propose to me and my nails are not done, it's not Pucks. going to be good. It's not going to be good. So, yeah, so I did all that just in preparation for the shoot. And then now, um, so that day when he was proposing, I, I don't know, I kind of, it's like you kind of know, but you don't know, you know. So it was in the studio and then all these friends of ours were in the studio, but they always come to the studio. So it was nothing new, you know, because our friends come to the studio and we hung out. But then there's a time they were like, come, let's go downstairs. No, come upstairs. So I was like, okay, what's going on? But I was like, no, let me not go ahead of myself. So, um, yeah, so yes and no. I kind of did, but also I kind of did not. Yeah. The backstory behind that is we had had like maybe two trials before that. <laughs> of the proposal. Of the proposals. Uh, of the proposal. I had like two other ideas. So the first one was, was uh, supposed to be at, uh, a small world mm -hmm. and that was before COVID oh, yeah, it's what it's COVID that happened yeah? Yeah, yeah yeah it's COVID that happened so it messed up things and then the second one I don't remember what happened mm. oh yeah I had a different idea I wanted to do it just the two of us and that didn't go so well so yeah. <laughs> uh, so he, he asked me like what if I propose to you and it's just the two hours and I was so mad because first me I wanted a photographer and a videographer because that moment has to be captured and then I wanted my friends to be there so when he said just the two of us, I'm like, who's going to take the videos? Who's taking the pictures? What do you mean? Because <laughs> I didn't want to act out the engagement photos. I wanted like the actual engagement. engagement uh, Feeling. Yeah, reaction. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah. So, but I didn't actually think he would consider it because he had this whole plan yeah. of going to G to Naivasha and stuff. But uh, I blew the balloon. But I loved the proposal. I loved so it. So she did. She, she kind of did. But we got the point where... Um, I didn't care that she knew it was coming. It's just she didn't know how I was going to how? do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how? It's actually interesting. Her mother has never asked me, never did ask me about my dreadlocks, right. never did ask me about my piercings. And then we go out on dates. Uh, we have made it very intentional, especially breakfast dates. Mm -hmm. Just go out and talk to each other and enjoy a good meal. <music> It was interesting to introduce Ethan to my friends first. Of course, my friends I think knew before my mm. mom. Yeah. So I I didn't tell them who he was. I didn't tell them the name. I didn't tell them their face. I mean, I didn't show them a picture. I just had this name that I used to call him, Caramel Macchiato. <laughs> and that's all I told him. I mean, I told them. So um, it was really good. But I think the fear, not the fear, but I was really hoping that he actually has a connection with my friends in that like I don't have to be there for him to talk to my friend you know they can actually just have a, a conversation so yeah it went pretty well my friends I uh, really liked him so I was happy um, so for my mom this guy had dreadlocks this guy had tattoos this guy has pierced his ears hey hey so and these are the things my mom was like okay later after Jana first her the no no for her is sagging so at least he doesn't suck, but the rest, he ticked the box. So, <laughs> so yeah, but I was just like, you know what? Like if God has spoken about this man, my mom is going to come around. So yeah, so I introduced him to my mom and my mom really liked him actually. And they have a really good relationship with my mom, which I'm grateful to God for. <laughs> 
I mean, the dreadlocks for me were uh, a, a season. I always knew it was a season for me. I didn't, I didn't necessarily like go out to say that I always have dreadlocks. Yeah. But um, for me, it was always. Um, I knew it was a season that was going to end, so that's why I cut them. So it's actually interesting. Her mother has never asked me, never did ask me about my dreadlocks, okay. never did ask me about my piercings. All she cared and what she loved about me is that I was saved, is that I'm saved, and that I bring out the best in Makena. So she really, I think the discussions for dreadlocks were just, I don't know if you guys even had that conversation Not after I introduced, you Not introduced twice, me. Yeah. yeah, but I know she was happy when I cut Yeah, them. I know, even <laughs> yeah. I know that. She yeah, didn't she, say she it, did but say I know, it, but I know, know she was happy when she, I cut yeah, them. Yeah, when, when I cut them, yeah. yeah. Well, I think when it comes to friends and uh, my siblings, for them they had known for a while, so that wasn't a problem. Um, I'm going to say how you said, Yeah. I have to be cool to fit in your friend's circle. <laughs> so um, before <laughs> before um, McKenna and I met, we we used to hang out a couple of friends of mine, who we still hang out with. They are actually our closest friends, um, and we always were we've always been this cool people, you know. Um, <laughs> so uh, we they all, we said and they said also it was an agreement that we had to meet. Get, I had to get someone who was cool enough to fit into that uh, clique, for lack of a better word, or mm. th that crew. So, but it was such a swish, it was such a slam dunk when I introduced uh, McKenna to them because, I mean, McKenna is all, all but everything, <laughs> including cool. Yeah. So that, that wasn't <clears throat> a difficult part. Um, with my, my folks, I knew I wasn't ever going to introduce McKenna to my folks unless I knew I was going to marry her. Yeah, that was, that was, because I did that mistake with someone, then I was like, ah, I'm never going to do that, do that, do that again. So I never introduced, I've only introduced one other girl to my folks, and that was like a very long time ago. And then after that I said, until I'm sure I'm marrying this girl, I'm not going to do, introduce her to my, my parents. So when I was sure, I, were we engaged by then? Mm, no. Had I proposed? By the time I was meeting your folks, yeah. yes. We yeah, were so clearly you can see I had to make sure that everything was in. Because my dad is just a stickler for rules, you yeah. know, like. He's a you, traditional. Yeah. yeah. So you have to make sure that you have some things stayed right, yeah. There's so many expectations, let me tell you, so many. Like, I can't even pick one out but yes I had a lot of expectations over myself as a wife and over him as my husband so there were many expectations which have then been turned around you know like marriage is such a school of life yani kabisa so I thought like when we get married uh, that we have to spend all the time together even when in the house we have to be together you see like this killer star hivi hivi like I can't be in the room reading a book and he's in the sitting room doing something else. So I used to, like when the first time, because I like to read a lot and he he likes like PS and watching movies and those things and wacky. So so when, like when the first time that happened, I was like, wait, what? Like we're actually married, but we're not like together. Like I was, I was so shocked, but I also remember I had to make peace with the fact that we don't have to be like this in each other's space kabisa so that we know we're actually married and you know at now we're doing well so that was an expectation that was really turned around for me yeah i think for me my expectation was i had found a buddy that i could watch movies with <laughs> like binge like especially during covid times maze you're just like wow you have a lot of free times yeah so I was expecting that, like, Yanni would be there in our blankies from 8 to 8 or watching. 6 to 6 watching movies. McKenna in five minutes. You know that car, the first badge that shows <laughs> when uh, you're just like, Go and, she's already asleep. Yeah. So I'm just like, you can't be even serious. Yeah. And then she promised, babe, I'll do better. Mm. She never has done better. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that's one expectation. Back on, nowadays, when she says, 
at the, uh, babe, let's let's watch a movie. I don't. I'm just like if she sleeps, I'm like, okay. Mm, come on, yeah. me melala. I won't even. I just won't try hard. Yeah. yeah. So actually, Ethan, what we do for fun together, Ethan. I'm a free bird, like I like to be outside and do things outside. Ethan prefers to be home and do his own thing. So we had to create that balance. So uh, we do stuff in the house, so like we look for a recipe and cook together and have a whole experience yeah. of like even like plating the food, like the whole nine yard of like fine dining but in our house. Um, and then we go out on dates. Uh, we have made it very intentional, especially breakfast dates. Mm -hmm. Just go out and talk to each other and enjoy a good meal. Uh, we also like things like Karura, just going on a walk because I can't ride a bicycle to save my life. <laughs> but I'm planning to learn that this year. So um, yeah, just things like that. Also traveling. Uh, yeah. We both love traveling. So that's at least something that we both there was no compromise per se. Yeah. We both enjoy traveling. And, and I think also, kind of like on top of that list is dancing. Oh, yeah. We have a lot of fun dancing together. Like yeah. even before we got married, we would do just like routines, routines yeah. and record for ourselves and just to keep and keep and yeah. just watch later. Yeah. yeah. And it's not like we're, we're good, good dancers. Yeah. We just like Don't to, get it twisted. <laughs> <laughs> our wedding our wedding was also very was a very beautiful day one thing about uh, the wedding is that you should keep an open mind because these vendors will character develop you okay mm. so I will not mention which particular one but yeah there was one that really developed my character right when I, I like we drove into the venue and I was like what is going on so but uh, the wedding day was really beautiful um, I think it was it was literally like a manifestation of God's glory, mm. literally, because it wedding planning is such a journey of of doubts and and wondering are we ever gonna get married? Where will we get the funds from? And fights. Yeah, and fights for disagreeing because I want this, he wants that. I want this, it's too expensive, things like that. But it was a really beautiful day. Mm. It was, yeah. I think for for the wedding day for me. Um, by by the previous day, the, the the day before the wedding, I was just I cared about just being attached to her. I don't know if that even makes sense, but like just saying I do. Once the rings were put on and I'd already signed the certificate, that was it for me. So I remember even during uh, uh, on the day of the wedding, um, once that part happened, the rest was just like. Be. Whatever comes, whatever goes. Yeah. You know, even if there's no food, I'm married. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't matter anymore. So, I, it was for me to be honest, especially with the journey we had gone through, it was something I was finally happy to have gotten to this side because when you're on this other side, you're just like, I don't even know if it's gonna happen. You know, That's like true. you're focused on so many issues or so many things that could go wrong, but when you finally get on this side, you're like. Possible. I just did it. Yeah. It's like you've won. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's true. So did we have a model marriage? I don't think I had one particular marriage that I like looked up to. This is gonna sound very Christianist, but for me, it was Christ in the church. That was the best example I had. So, um, yeah, that's mostly what I had. But what I'll say is that we had uh, couples who had gone before us um, and who worked with us when we were dating, when we were engaged, and up to now, actually, we still work with them. Because as a married couple that no one lied to you, you also need to be accountable to someone else. So, yeah. yeah, and also our bishop was very, very, very instrumental um, in our journey to marriage. Yeah. I think... If you don't mind, I think uh, a couple that we really modeled after who uh, also worked with us and still work with us, um, I believe you guys have hosted them, uh, they were Malos. So, yeah, yeah they, they, they worked with us even when we were dating, they were our best couple and we are even still now. friends still now. Yeah. Um, 
we not necessarily at it told them could you guys show us how to you know how to how work do you, how to do this yeah thing. but they we have turned to them and before and now still to talk about marriage and and how to to maneuver because they've been they've gone before us and they've been able to share the, some of the things that they've because it's nothing new by the way it's true yeah so they'll just share oh we've been through this and just this, in a different way yeah yeah so our honeymoon wasn't actually a surprise we planned for our honeymoon um it was i think the best time ever because first there's something that honeymoon does first there's something that wedding planning does to you yeah. that you just want to go and have a good time at honeymoon so uh wedding planning is a lot so i feel like honeymoon is a place where you relax and just like who oh, we're finally married we're finally we finally reached the light at the end of the tunnel kind of thing so and it was very relaxing also because ethan could work 24 7 and i'm not even kidding so for it was good to see him at honeymoon not having to work not having to to be responding to calls and stuff like that so yeah it was a good time i feel like though we had traveled together before this was that one travel that i really rested like like really rested yeah. and we it was just amazing especially like she said after you've gone through that whole process of wedding planning and stuff like that that was a good break before now we could return to the normal life mm. um yeah so i really had a good time what did we learn about each other i think for me it was not something new but it was an affirmation of mm. who my husband is uh because ethan is the is the one He's the budgeter, you know. He's the one who will say, "This is the money. This is how we going, we're going to spend it." And me, I'm like, "If the money is there, spend it," you know. So uh, for me, it was an affirmation. I knew that, but it was like, like, yeah, this is him, and he's not going to change. Well, I mean, of course, he he will tweak like to favor me, mm -hmm. but like, I think we need that balance because if I'm spending all my money, then I don't think I'll grow, you know. And if he's not enjoying his money, also, he will not have rest for example so it's a good balance yeah uh for me what i learned about makena or what i saw even more clearly and more vividly was um how how she is really a last born <laughs> or like an only child you know because she she's just the pizzazz you know just those two things um and it's not and most people would look at that as a as a as a bad thing or rather something they would say hey am i did i choose the right person but for me and i was just sharing with her today in the morning that it's something i'm a bit of a very stiff kind of guy when it comes to money and to her she's brought i feel like she brings the the exciting part of my life to me you get so I feel if if I was to plan the wedding, it would probably be the most dull <laughs> wedding. You know, it it there will be more emphasis on the music and and <laughs> and like things that don't even make sense. Yeah. You get so um, it w it it allowed me to see who Makena is and to broaden my understanding of even how to treat her or how to be with her or even how to handle some some comments that you're like you can't be serious you know those comments that you want to fight and argue about then you it made me understand where they are coming from what what is some of the things that annoy me about McKenna uh time we actually just had a conversation about it today in the morning things they don't tell you about marriage we can also write another book about that you know so um because there are things that you experience in marriage that even now as a mar as someone who's married i can't really tell an unmarried person this is what to expect <music>
Makena, and it's not that Makena doesn't know how to keep time. She can. By the way, if she <laughs> if she wants to, she will be on time for yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But like when it's when it's just a kawaida day, it's <laughs> just like what's the hurry? You know, like there are some some days when I think Makena is done dressing up, and then I see her go to the bathroom, <laughs> and I'm like, you still have something else to do? Cause me, I'm done. I'm already done. I see her dressed and then I'm like, babe, see, we go now. She's like, no, I'm not done. Haven't you seen my face? Yeah. I'm like, your face looks fine. Your face looks fine. And yeah. she's like, no, I still have makeup to do. I'm like, who are you going to see outside there? I'm here. You don't have to. But anyway, it's um, it's time. Yeah. Which she, she said she'll, she'll work on. Yeah. 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 And I don't know what happened because I used to be a strickler for 10. Uh, but for me, I'm just thinking about, so for Ethan, he will, he will drink water and, <laughs> and then leave that cup wherever he, like wherever, your magic is, and he won't come to take it. So you'll find different cups everywhere in the house, like in the kitchen, in the bathroom, in the, like in the study, everywhere. So, and I remember just, there's a day he actually, he's the one who brought it up and I was like, oh, so you actually realize that you leave cups everywhere. So it's not like, an, I feel like annoy is such a strong word, but it's, a, it's one of those things you're like, ha, ungeweza kupeleka yo kikombe kwa sink, nge kwa poa, but it's our too, yeah. Um, conflicts. Conflicts are, first of all, inevitable in marriage. Um, but I think there is a place for communication and that's how you're able to manage conflict well. So one thing that's very different about us, if, we're, if, if there's something we're disagreeing on, I would prefer to talk about it there and then. Doesn't matter whether my temper is on a hundred, I just want to talk about it then. For Ethan, he prefers to take some time off and then come and talk about it. So in the in the first months of our marriage, it used to be very like it used to be very foreign to me when he says, "No, let's not talk about it now. Let's talk about it later." I'm like, "What do you mean later? What I what do I need to do between now and that later? If it's after work, what what am I supposed to be thinking and all of those things?" So we had to find a balance because, uh, person personally, I realized that. Um, the time we're taking off is to actually be liberal about what we're arguing about so that it's not emotions talking over over myself and for them it's usually logic and I don't know how they operate um, so that uh, taking time is just to to understand and to figure out okay so who was in the wrong how could I have treated it better how do I speak to him in a better way even if I'm communicating that I didn't like this I need to communicate it in a in a in a sane way and in a way that will not make the situation even worse so yeah allow me to also elaborate that as much as we share this cup uh, Con uh, annoying things it might seem like it's a small thing but when you're married the small thing can blow up to something big it's true uh, it's like it's it's cute to talk about arguments after you can even laugh about them but when it does happen it was a cup would be like you just called her something that you know can <laughs> yeah they can be really bad <laughs> um so it's true, uh, which also is something Makena finds annoying. Makena finds it annoying that I prefer to, especially when the argument is is um, like really heated, I prefer to step back. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, we are now getting emotional. We are now just throwing words at each other, hurting each other. How about we just take a couple of hours or just separate ourselves and then think about what's happening and how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So that's, in some cases, some cases, which is actually interesting because when we got married at first, I didn't think we'd ever understand each other on how to deal with it because sure. I really wanted to step back and she really wanted me to have those conversations there and then. And of late, it's interesting. There are times where we'll step back and there are times where we'll just fight it out and deal with it there and then. Yeah. So um, that's how we have learned to deal with conflict. Because like, sometimes when the conflict is heated and I feel like I should back out she'll be like no babe let's just talk let's I know that let's actually have a conversation about what just happened you know and and I'll be like okay let me calm down and let's now address what the issue is yeah. 
So that's how we've learned to deal with conflict. And not that now it means like, woo, we figured it all out and we don't have any conflict. It's a lie. It's a journey. Sometimes you're just like, it, they're like, like, they're like, and unfortunately it's like ticking time bombs. It's like a mine you're walking on. You never know when, when? you step on one. It could be that cup again. Yeah. It could be that cup or again. something totally different. Yeah, or th something that different. Like when we got married, Makena, I never used to wash my hands when I get come out <laughs> into the house. Like it didn't make sense to me. I'm not eating right now. Why do Why I have to wash, to wash my hands? My hand? I'm going to eat maybe three hours later. Why am I washing my hands now? And it's like every day. So that thing used to bug me. Yeah, used to be, Babe, go and wash your hands. Babe, have you washed your hands? Naizom Kono. And then sometimes it's not, it's not directly. It's like, Naizom Kono. Now, Naji. So I'm just like, ah. But then now, after, uh, after living together for that while, you kind of, now I even feel, whenever I get into the house, I feel filth on my hands. So I'm just like, let me go and wash my hands. Wash my hands. Yeah. yeah. Things they don't tell you about marriage, we can also write another book about that, you know. So, um, because there are things that you experience in marriage that even now as, a mar as someone who's married, I can't really tell an unmarried person this is what to expect. Mm -hmm. there, th there are some things in marriage that you, you literally just have to see for yourself. Um, but I think, I think it's just been the undoing of self is what has been like i used to hear that but it's when you experience it it's even more intense you know what it means to actually undo who you are and be selfless you know it's in the very sense of it it's in the very 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 sense of it so for me that was a very big um that was a very big lesson that i had to learn especially now when we were newly married like months into the marriage right now of course there are things that happen and i'm like okay this is another thing to undo this is another thing to be selfless about but i think now that i'm conscious about it it's not as difficult i'm not resisting mm. as i used i, I could have when we were early in marriage, mm. yeah. how how we look at outside information is our, our bishop likes to say that each couple has a a different culture marriage culture and and even as you converse with other people who are married you need to know what works for you and what doesn't work for you mm -hmm. and for us so you you will hear this being taught and then now you go back into your homes and say okay this was discussed or this is what was even said during the service how does this apply to us as a couple does it work does it not work because we have actually come to learn that another man's meat is another man's poison. You know, in a, there are some things that other people value in their relationships more than another thing that we are like, it's Doesn't, okay, yeah. it's, it's not that big of a deal. So yeah, there the, the, the are definitely some things that you have to learn, like you will hear a lot of information from outside and then now you have to now come and ask yourself what applies because again there's no solution there's no equation for how to achieve the perfect marriage um in fact i was going to say that the way they say parenting is a full-time job same as marriage same as being a husband or being a wife because you really have to you're really going to have to to learn the other person and see what makes them happy, what excites them, what makes them feel valued. If you actually really care about the other person, you're going to spend time, and just not just a little time, a lot of time working on knowing that person. It's actually a school. It's a school of, Where you're of life. Learning. Yeah. yeah. Let me tell you, and I say this in a good way, um, all these women you see outside here, whether they are pretty, <laughs> or they look as expensive as, as I don't know, whatever they look as expen expensive as. When in their home, when they're in their own house, they are just as, <laughs> I don't know, they are just like as chaotic as babies. <laughs> and I say that because that sometimes I walk into McKenna <laughs> doing stuff that I would have never pictured <laughs> if I was outside, like I was telling her today, like I would have never pictured if I, before I met her. Like, you know, the way you look at pretty girls or like 
very expensive girls are like, ah, she would never do that. You know, she would never do that. Yeah. And stuff like that. So once you are in the house with them, they're just, you're just like, I, I can't believe you just that. did that. Like I, it just, for, so for me, the things that the things i can't share on camera yeah yeah that's why i'm using a, a wide <laughs> no it's more intense it's more intense we'll keep it in our home <laughs> so um there are things i'll i'll walk into and i'll just laugh because yeah. i'm just like i thought you were pretty <laughs> i don't know i feel like like I wouldn't particularly say what he does that's funny because mm -hmm. of course like it's like on air and everything but yeah we really have a good time in our house yeah and that's all I'm gonna say since I married you mm -hmm. it's been a year six months mm -hmm. yeah um you have shown me how dull my life was <laughs> without you um I have found so much color so much color so much excitement I actually didn't think my life would be this exciting um, to be able to travel with you to be able to experience just a new way of looking at life to be able to even appreciate myself yeah. um, has been something that I've really enjoyed yeah. thank you yeah. I love you, I love you too. Um, since I married you um, one year six months ago um, you have you have brought out the best version of me. You have challenged me to be a better person. You have assured me of how strong of a person I am. And I appreciate um, the way you love me. Um, I feel like God knew what I needed and he brought you into my life. So, Aww. yeah, I love you. I love you too. And that is our, our love, love story. story.